Examination of the spine. A pain in the back. I say, Tommy, giving a rector spinae a good thrashing, are we? Impressive stuff, Tommy. But did you know many patients are in fact unable to bend their backs at all? We must assess them using examination of the spine, a pain in the back. Inspection. After washing your hands and gaining consent, be sure to expose your patient's back Observe about 360 degrees for skin changes, scars, abnormal hair, and note the spine curvatures. Can you recall some spinal deformities, Tommy? Well, you certainly may have to in your osteo. Fixed rotation of the neck is torticollis. Thoracic kyphosis may be exaggerated by wedge fractures. Also, recall that loss of lumbar lordosis is a sign of ankylosis. Now ask the patient to ambulate and observe for gait abnormalities. These may accompany spinal deformities such as scoliosis. Palpation. Ascertain whether the patient is in any pain and proceed to palpate spinous processes and paraspinal muscles for tenderness. Note any steps in the vertebrae which imply spondyloesthesis. Also, be sure you don't forget to feel over the sacroiliac joints, Tommy. Movement. Ask the patient to copy specific movements to test each spinal region. Recall the normal range of movement for cervical flexion, extension, rotation, and lateral flexion. Smashing, Tommy. Now assess for lumbar motion by placing fingers on adjacent spinous processes and asking the patient to touch their toes. Your fingers should separate if lumbar motion is preserved. Ankylosing spondylitis may cause patients to bend at the hip and your fingers will not separate substantially. You may offer to perform Schober's test. Marks are made in the dimples of Venus and points measured 10 centimeters above and 5 centimeters below this position. Now when the patient touches their toes, flexion of the vertebrae will cause the distance to increase from 15 centimeters to over 20 centimeters. Super Tommy! Now ask the patient to sit down and fold their arms to fix their pelvis and assess for thoracic rotation. At this point, students will also examine for chest expansion and tenderness of the costochondral joints, or Tietz syndrome. Excellent work, Tommy. But to finish, now lie the patient down and warn them you are about to passively raise each leg. If the sciatic nerve is under pressure, intense pain occurs before full hip flexion is reached. When pain has been elicited, it may be accentuated by dorsiflexing the foot known as Braggard's test. On completion, thank your patient and offer to examine the neurovascular system, including deep tendon reflexes. So, one may present a patient thus, Tommy. Mr. Burton has loss of lumbar lordosis and exaggerated thoracic kyphosis and neck hyperextension. A question mark posture. There is severe limitation of both lateral and forward lumbar flexion. There is reduced chest expansion and costochondral tenderness. This is suggestive of ankylosing spondylitis. Tommy, that was a truly sterling effort. Never again will you have your back against the wall when asked to demonstrate examination of the spine. A pain in the back.